Why do we always have to get something in return? Why is it that it's everything has to be transactional? I do this, I want something back. This is a very dunya focused, short term focused way of thinking. Assalamu alaikum. The mahar or the dowry is a very sensitive topic for some people. I made a video covering the topic from a Muslim man's perspective, giving advice, and I think I gave a very balanced view that we should be generous. It's a gift after all, but also that if the family is asking for something that you really can't afford, then just say you can't afford it. And inshallah, eventually that will shift the culture. But one comment on that video really caught my eye and I need to address it. I'm a mean, by the way, I wrote this book on Islamic masculinity and I help Muslim men become men of action who impact the world. So what does this brother's comment say? He said, this mahar thing is making me doubtful about Allah's fairness between men and women. It's also making me, astaghfirullah, quite resentful towards Allah's legislation. If Allah is really just and fair, then what did Allah bestow upon men in return for obliging them to give dowry? What do men gain in return for giving women their dowry? What rights do men gain upon their wives in return for being ordained to give them dowry? Wallahi, this is making me resentful. I just can't find a convincing answer as to why men have been obliged to give dowry to women. Now, I'm not going to lie. This was quite shocking. But also, I know people are coming from all different levels of Iman and levels of knowledge and everything. And so when you see something like this, I think we should address it because other people might be feeling the same way. He said he can't find a convincing reason why a man should have to give the dowry, the mahar, to their wife. But the thing is, we can find so many things where there's no convincing reason per se why Allah wants us to do something. Why do I have to put water and wash my ears for wudu? Why do I have to do two sajdahs, two sujuds in my prayer? Why do I need two witnesses to get married? Not one, not three, not four. But we're Muslims and that means we're already convinced that Allah is our creator. He wants the best for us and he is deserving of our worship and submission. So we're convinced of that. So anything that he asks us to do beyond that, we don't need convincing per se. We just do it. And really, this is the test of life. Do you believe in Allah or not? And then if you believe, will you submit to his orders and his commands? So if you believe in Allah, it doesn't matter if you're convinced or not. We need to obey Allah as long as it's coming from an authentic source, of course. And by the way, maybe you can't find a convincing reason for a man to have to give a dowry to a woman, but I can. It shows commitment from a man. And that's why it's something that should be a sizable, a significant amount so that it's a symbol of his commitment to marrying that woman and taking care of that woman. The other reason people give as well is that the woman can then make use of this dowry if she was ever to lose her husband or whatever. She'll have a bit of money set aside. The second thing that the brother said in the comment is what do we get in return for giving this dowry? And again, I would question that whole thinking in the first place. Why do we always have to get something in return? Why is it that it's everything has to be transactional? I do this, I want something back. This is a very dunya focused, short term focused way of thinking. And I would advise you to really instead think of Allah wants me to do it. Therefore, Allah is going to reward me when I do it. And Allah knows that this is best for me. So although I can't see the exact benefit right now, there will be something there for me, inshallah. And let me just try and do it with sincerity, because the more sincerity I have when I do it, the more Allah is going to reward me and put barakah in my life because of my obedience and sincerity. And us Muslims, of course, Allah is telling us always in the Quran to look at the Akhirah, look for the Akhirah. And so we should ask, okay, we're going to inshallah please Allah by doing this. And so what can we expect in the Akhirah? And you find the answer to that in the Quran all over the place. What if I was to ask, what do I get from giving to the needy, to the poor people? What do I get for holding my tongue when I've got a bad comment to say to my dad, but I hold it back? What do I get for dropping my friend off at the airport? So by obeying Allah and giving the dowry to my wife, I'm getting the best thing, which is the pleasure of Allah, inshallah, and the reward of Allah in the akhirah. That's the first thing I'm getting, and that is enough, inshallah. And also, I'm getting a wife in return. If it is necessary for me to give dowry to actually get married, then I'm getting a wife in return, if you think about it. And I'm doing it in a way that Allah wanted, so inshallah, Allah will put barakah in that marriage because I'm following his process. But now, thirdly, there is a dark point to make here. And it's hidden under the language being used here. And I think it's a valid point. And that is the benefit for a man of getting married in 2023 versus what he's likely to get out of it or the risks that are associated with it are quite unbalanced sometimes. In 2023, if I get married, I'm going to spend on my wife. 
I'm going to adapt my lifestyle around her. I'm going to work hard to give her the best life I can give her, which is all good. And there's no problem with that. But will I get the things that in the past were taken for granted? that a man would always assume that he would get. Like a feeling of respect from her. Like her taking care of the household and the children. Like always being able to express myself when I need to fulfill my needs. <laughs> and of course, her following my guidance when I give her some. Will I get these things in return for getting married in 2023? It depends on the woman, but not always. And this is becoming a bigger problem. Although there are definitely, definitely still good women out there that would give you all those things I just mentioned, there are some, no doubt, maybe a growing number, who would not give you the basic things that you would be looking for in a wife. And that is the dark truth of marriage in 2023. So what would I really say to this brother after reading his comment? Read a book or follow a series on YouTube about the names and attributes of Allah. Learn about how he loves you, how he cares for you, how he is doing the best for you always, and why you should obey him. You should take him as your true Lord and your creator, and therefore you should direct all your obedience to him. And then also realize that not all the women are like the ones that you are thinking about when you wrote that comment. There are still women out there who obey Allah, who know the correct gender roles and have a well-balanced household where you have your role, she has your role, and everyone's happy. And so I would say, watch out the content you consume because it can often make you lose hope in the types of women that are available out there for you to marry. Instead, focus on what benefits you and don't worry about what's out there because Allah can create someone purely for you to marry them, inshallah. But now the question is, if you want a woman who is worth the dowry and following the process and everything, what do you look for in a woman? What are the good traits in a potential wife? And I made a video on that, so check that out next. See you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.